So first thing first we are going to model the can object which is our main center of focus and the main product. So let's delete all this stuff from the background, we won't need them. Go to the top view, sorry the front view and bring our background template image which is a can template. You can have your own design or you can just ask the product designer you are working with, company you are working with to provide the template or the outline or basically the what do you call uh, the main shape blueprint yeah so we are going to lock this reference image <coughs> we don't want this to move by accident and uh, bring the reduce reduce the opacity just enough so that we can see other stuff happening in the background yeah so there are several ways you can model this object you can use a uh, cylindrical shape and uh, modify the loops but uh, a better way to model this kind of 360 cylindrical shape is to use a uh, screw modifier which is also known as lathe or revolve in other softwares so let's bring in a bezier curve and go to the edit mode and uh, yeah we are going to delete these vertices we won't need them because we are going to create new vertices i believe uh, this is the starting point Control click here to create a new point and uh, scale it down. Uh, we don't want this curve to be uh, too big for the next tangent curve. In case you are not able to scale or rotate it, press V for vector type and set it to free. So you should be able to adjust it now just like a graph editor. V is for vector. And uh, Okay, I am going to trace it as precisely as possible. In case you want it to be 100% perfect, you can always ask uh, the product designer to provide the CAD data for this. But in this case, the requirement is uh, not to be 100% perfect. It should be visually. So, control click and keep creating new points and uh, make sure we get the outer shape as good as possible. Take your time and uh, in case you need to okay yeah rotate it R okay yeah so when creating a new point so yeah just need to uh, take a visual judgment on uh, how big the next curve is going to be if handle is too big or too small you will end up wasting your time on uh, adjusting the handles so it's a uh, just uh, look at the next uh, contour of the object and just set the handle type accordingly this one is a easy shape here and we are going to just skip this entire vertical section and create a point at the end so again this handle handle is too big we are going to scale it down because the next curve is much sharper and uh, this image is not exactly a front view as you can see the bottom have uh, curvatures if it was an orthographic front you would see the lines to appear flat for rotation you can also type uh, on the numpad just type 90 degree quick and easy so we are going to use uh, our imagination here and uh, assume these curves were flat and uh, make uh, curves as we understand them from the visual just one more point control click and uh, you can also use e e for extrude to create a point it's similar to extrude command all right so we have the half of the curve which we need for a screw modifier quickly going to save this file can blend can sorry yeah and uh, rename this bezier curve to can curve go to the object mode and the origin point is not in the center so we are going to bring it in the center before we apply the modifier here so go to the edit mode uh, sorry we align the cursor to world 
it should be in the center it could be either in the center or the center of the profile curve I mean the half of the profile curve and go to the asset origin and uh, origin to 3d cursor so the orange dot which was uh, on the top right now is in the center of object screw modifier so this should work so the profile curve is uh, now a 3d object it's a pretty simple modeling tool I'm sure pretty much everyone is uh, aware of this we are going to increase the steps uh, so that even when we zoom in in the close-up there are no polygons seen because this is not a gaming model and there is no limitation of polygons just bring in cavity and maybe better previewing option 2.8 have good ones have a look at the this looks fine okay make sure the origins origin is, is in the center and uh, I will delete this reference image we don't need this instead we'll bring it bring in another image for the top view which is uh, yeah, this one align it properly we yeah. it doesn't look symmetrical but that's okay uh, we can uh, do some adjustments lock it again and bring the opacity down this one we are going to model with the subdivision modeling like uh, sorry the, let's bring in a circle and we are going to model the vertices with the vertices and uh, scale it uh, on the, for the outer edge okay this looks good so you are going to go in the edit mode just make sure there are uh, not too many points and uh, just enough which uh, we can modify and manipulate let's have a look at another image which is uh, for the reference and let's see what is happening in the top view exactly okay. so it starts somewhere here and then there is a kind of a debuff curvature and comes up again there are two steps of debuffs so we will select the outer edge alt right click and press E to extrude and just scale it uh, down create another step E S E S scale it down stop it right here and uh, this internal part we are going to model manually so just delete half of the model we can use the mirror modifier later in the wireframe mode so that uh, the other side of the model is deleted as well just in case there are any overlapping loops we'll uh, manually place these uh, points and uh, trace the shape Just make sure the distribution of vertices is uh, even they are not too random right. almost done and uh, yeah maybe a better spacing okay so we have half of the shape and uh, maybe yeah. Okay. 
we can use the mirror modifier on this one before that let's make sure our edges are aligned select the outer edges and scale in x axis and set it to 0 we'll apply a mirror modifier and see what is happening turn on clipping so that we can uh, there is no need of uh, overlapping at the end of model yeah. let's have a look at uh, smooth model with the subdivision surface any wrong edges will be seen here Yeah, it just look it looks looks fine. So we'll apply this mirror modifier and uh, go to edit mode. Just select this one. Control right click. Control right click. Control right click, and uh, we'll make an extrusion here in the inverse direction, Z direction. Okay. Alt right click here to select the loop so let's see what is happening here there is an extrusion in the z axis we are going to scale it down and then there is a circular shape inside for that we need another extrusion maybe not so much yeah. Extrusion here, and uh, we need to bridge this uh, area here. Control select the edge and control click, and uh, just trace the circular the oval shape we have right next to the opener. Don't worry about this uh, circular shape uh, not being perfect here. Once we apply the smooth modifier, the subdivision surface, the shape will look much better. But be careful and uh, make it as good as possible. I'll adjust these points a bit here and uh, smooth this loop ok create an extrusion in the z direction scale it down a bit and we are going to grid fill let's search grid fill grid fill again and adjust the parameters if you need to yeah four works fine here so now what we need to do is apply some smooth on all the all the sharp corners we'll alt right click and select the loop shift alt right click to select multiple loops alt right click here alt right click here this one and Control B for bevel. I think uh, the default settings are good. Three segments. Let's uh, test it with the subdivision surface. Shade smooth. The model looks fine. I think this will work. Okay, just unhide our can object and let's place our can cap on top of the can G and C
So next we are going to model is the can opener. For that quickly bring in a plane and uh, place it right at the center of the can opener. Go to the edit mode and select this edge. Control and uh, control click, control click just like before and keep creating this these new edges. Can do. Yeah, I'm just going to quickly save it. Control click. Control click here and uh, trace the entire outer shape. Control click here. Not too many of uh, polygons, just enough so that you can uh, control them in case you need to adjust any vertices. Let's select this one and control click here. Don't worry about uh, edge loops too much here because uh, this is quite a simple model and we are not going to rig it anyway it's a uh, yeah control r and bring in two loops but it's always good to have good loops i'm going to bring three more loops here control r control r is uh, to add loops so we need a uh, yeah, bridge this one here. Control click and scale it down. Control R and uh, just to match it with the rest of the model so that we can easily close the loops. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Yeah, control click in the uh, in the vertex mode. To do that, press one. One is for vertex. And I'll select these two points and press F to fill the gap. F is for fill. Then I'll select these three edges and press F and F. After uh, filling in the one of the polygon, uh, you don't need to select edges again and again. It automatically picks up the next loop. So you just need to press F for the next one. Yeah. But for that you need to have some edges like uh, maybe control F here make some better placement some gap here and uh, I'll uh, delete this loop here it's uh, not required uh, sorry dissolve edges because we want only the edges to go and polygons to stay here slightly better alignment and we're almost done with this one we need to make room for one more edge loop here to connect it with the internal part yeah, control R here and select these two points and F select these three press F to fill F to fill here yeah. I will select these outer edges and scale them in the uh, X axis with the zero number just enter zero yeah. so control click and uh, press F go to the object mode and uh, apply a mirror okay once again we are going to bring the origin here select this edge and the uh, origin to select it sorry origin to 3d cursor and then apply our mirror modifier here subdivision surface to check all the loops working fine okay the loops could look uh, look good we'll delete uh, all the modifiers sorry about that and uh, Go to the edit mode, select uh, these outer edges and uh, scale, sorry, bring them in the center. 
extrude all the polygons in the z direction we need some thickness in the object maybe one more loop here okay So I will click uh, bring in another loop here. Sorry about that, it was a crash. And uh, select these two edges and press B and bevel it. And it will create this uh, hexagon shape. I will select these polygons and extrude them in Z axis. Okay. Bring in a mirror modifier and uh, shade smooth. Okay. So apply another mirror modifier. We need this for a Z direction. I mean the depth part. So we'll um, move all the polygons slightly above so that uh, it's heading in the right direction. Make sure it's not overlapping. Apply all these mirror modifiers and uh, we are going to close the edge loops here. Select these two and press F and press F. And select this one and uh, then you can just press F. It will automatically pick up the next one. F, F. Yeah. So, Very useful command. Internal edges as well. Select these two, press F, and uh, it will automatically pick up the next one. Close all of this and go to the object mode. Sorry, this one as well. F here. And yeah, they should. Uh, I see some sharp corner here. I hope uh, there is a. There are no double vertices. Let's just uh, cross check, remove doubles. Yeah, there are no doubles here. But it's always good to select all the vertices and uh, just apply remove doubles so that the model is clean. Let's go to the object mode and apply a subdivision surface. Maybe two subdivisions look good. Okay, so there is a slight uh, tilt here. We are going to tilt our model and uh, rotate this one. Select our uh, pivot point to 3D cursor and uh, rotate it down a little just like our visual reference and we are going to select object and pivot point is already to the 3d cursor we are going to rotate it and bring our opener to the right place g and z 
solid it more place it right here I'll parent it to the cap so that we can scale it properly it's anyways uh, going to be a child of this object but we'll merge them anyway place it uh, in the center of can model okay let's have a look at this it looks fine I think we have our model ready it's a pretty simple thing nothing too complicated about it Previews are so much better in 2.8. The viewboard is much more exciting. It's uh, not just the dull grey colors. It's fun to look at. Let's just convert this model to sorry, can curve, can, and uh, this one is a uh, cap. Sorry, just getting used to the new interface. I think uh, yeah. cap and uh, opener. We'll call this collection the can. Before we move forward, we need to convert this to a mesh object. Right now, it's a cover object. Um, when you go to the edit mode you still get a profile curve not the polygons so uh, yeah you need to convert it to mesh so yeah in edit mode you see you can see it's still a curve and uh, not the polygon object go just search for a mesh to uh, curve to mesh so now you can see the polygon object I'll save it as Alright. Now that we have our can object ready, we can move on to the next part which is uh, UV unwrapping. Let's have a look at the can template here. So there are uh, two main parts. One is the silver one and one is the main body and uh, another third one is the basically just the text. It's a graphic. Uh, we are going to need a seam somewhere here. Alt right click. Control E for uh, edge menu and uh, mark C. Another edge here. Alt right click, Control E, mark C, and uh, the back edge here. We need uh, not the entire loop, but uh, Control right click here till here and uh, control right click and close this one. Press Control E and uh, mark seam. You can also select this from here. Uh, press 3 for uh, faces. Select uh, all the faces, sorry, not all the faces, but the linked faces. Select any of these and press L. It selects the linked island basically till where the scenes are. And, uh, press L. Make a new window for a uh, UV and uh, bring our uh, image for uh, text. Before that, let's just uh, apply a material here. Go to the object mode and uh, bring in a new material. Just a basic uh, principal PSDF. Can uh, yeah. So bring in a image texture and open the graphic we have here. 
so that we can uh, see what is happening in the UV. Now go to the UV editor and uh, select the CAN graphic we just imported. Now we have the edge, uh, faces already selected. Press U and uh, unwrap. Rotate it uh, in uh, 90 degree or 90. Switch to the look dev mode to have a better look at it. And uh, maybe yeah, scale it in the Z axis. Sorry, Y minus 1. Yeah. So yeah, this looks good, and I think because our uh, texture is about the right size, there is no need to adjust any of the right size. There is no need to be simple, straightforward, cylindrical shape. So I select the top polygon and press L to select the link till where the seams are. Select this one as well and uh, press U. Sorry, select this one. Press U to unwrap. So use the sync mode. Just getting used to the new interface here. I think it's uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry about that. So there's no need to have a, a separate space for uh, the silver part because it does. It will not have any texture, but. Uh, just a uh, shade just a uh, shade so i'll just place it uh, right above the can i'll create another material silver yeah select these uh, silver parts l press l for linked and assign l for linked and assign I think we have the UV ready. Alright, so UV is done. And, uh, so there are total three materials. One is uh, silver, one is the body and one is for the text. Text have a slight uh, bump in this and have a different shader like a silver shader. Slightly less uh, brighter. We we'll switch to the cycles because our final output will be in the cycles. But we will use EV for previewing. Go to the world and uh, apply a HDR we have so that we can preview our models. This one, uh, just go to the HDR. I think uh, this is from HDR Haven, I guess. Okay. To have a better look at this, what is happening in the shader, we will create, uh, create a emission plane so that we can see the reflections, uh, like the interaction with the material of the light, even though we have HDR, just uh, closer objects like how much uh, roughness we have in the material let's see okay give it some thickness maybe so just in case uh, I'll disable this one in a uh, camera Let's see which material we have selected. I think this one is uh, yeah. Maybe. So we are editing wrong material. We need uh, the body material here. Metallic. So increase the metallic and specular. It's going to be a shiny object. Uh, no need uh, for specular tint here. Roughness, uh, yeah, slightly rough. It's going to be not not going to be too chrome-like uh, reflective, but uh, it's uh, slightly more glossier than silver. Yeah. 
it should show this plane here I think uh, if yeah it's showing the emission shader the reflection plane increase the clear coat uh, like a different uh, another layer of uh, coating which is like a glossy coating you see on top of cans bring in uh, our herbs texture here instead of uh, what we already had look at this one is uh, the main body sorry the graphic uh, background let's see sorry the, instead of alpha it's going to be color color is going to be green and uh, maybe bring in a mix shader and uh, trying to adjust this uh, color here make a duplicate of principal shader and uh, mix it with the existing one and this one we are going to use for the body make or this one we are going to use for yes the silver body we have I mean uh, the main body so let's see copy the texture node and uh, we are going to use the main can graphic model uh, texture here which is a uh, filled with all the information and branding and we'll uh, let's add a bump to the herbs texture we have here a very slightly very little amount of bump which you can only see in the close-ups it won't be seen much from the distance but still gives a depth to the model as you can see all the strokes are popping out and maybe not so much we'll uh, decrease it 0.5 maybe looks uh, Okay. Instead of the strokes, uh, we'll invert this one. Let's see if this looks good. Oh, okay. I'm going to remove this control X and instead that. Uh, let's let's see 0.4 you can't see the difference much here but uh, it's uh, mostly going to be visible in the close-ups 0.4 value is working fine I'll keep it and uh, make a copy of uh, sorry let's just bring in uh, another principle and uh, mix it with the uh, main shader this one is going to be the text graphic and slightly more uh, roughness like the silver color like the silver material and uh, the color will be black I'll bring in a texture node here let's see yeah so we'll merge it with the main body material we'll use the blender text which we used earlier for the UV mapping this one and use it as a mask yeah so now you can see the text appearing on top of the herbs but the can body we can have a different color um, silver 
uh, I, uh, yeah, silver is what I'm going to choose. I like the combination here. You can decide your own color. It's uh, nothing crucial here about the colors. As long as your main shader is good. And, uh, I just uh, I'll make the herbs slightly darker with a curve uh, RGB curves and. Uh, slightly maybe but hue value is not affecting much here because uh, the model is silver I think uh, it's fine we can uh, add bump node to the text maybe okay I'll make a copy of this and uh, give a slight bump to the text Increase the strength here. Okay, let's see if it's affecting the model. Okay. I think this mod, uh, the shader looks fine, and uh, we'll bring in maybe a light here to have a better look at the model although the HDR is working fine but uh, let's see if uh, we can uh, have a better look at the reflective parts select the area and uh, move it out of the group Okay. So the can shader looks good. We are going to create the silver material now, which will be used for the cap and the bottom. Maybe slightly more specular and uh, stretched. Some stretch in the reflections, maybe. Okay. So for this material, the silver material, we are going to use the anisotropic BSDF. Very simple setup. It basically, it's like a brushed metal kind of a material. It, the reflections are uh, like stretched. It's uh, not like a straightforward reflection. Like uh, how, how you see the CD, it appears on the CD and uh, maybe the tires of the watches. Uh, you, I think you know what I'm talking about here. Let's increase this value and this tropic and all the reflections. Once you increase the roughness, reflections looks uh, Sorry, not with the roughness. Uh, in, it works along with the roughness. Yeah. So as you can see, all the reflections are like all stretch. And uh, point eight value is working fine, but uh, we don't want this to catch so much of reflection information should all blur and uh, only the colors should be received <coughs> okay so the material looks fine here I'll make a duplicate of this entire thing sorry uh, the model 
and we'll create another set of sorry another can here and color this one uh, differently go to the 3d view maybe okay so we can have a better look at both the uh, models <coughs> excuse me so for this one uh, i'm going to duplicate our existing material sorry um, not the slot but uh, yeah sorry and uh, we'll make a copy of it and rename it uh, can green can body green and we change the value hue, hue values uh, hue saturation values we used earlier and make a separate color for this one nothing nothing else changes just the colors okay so maybe not so dark and uh, we'll make it more subtle uh, color green looks good for the actual uh, commercial i was uh, given i was not given the liberty to use uh, whatever color i want uh, like uh, i was given the palette to use already so this is just for the tutorial purpose i'm going to select Yeah, this uh, may be slightly darker I'll decrease the intensity of light a bit it's creating too much of a harsh spot so the color looks fine I'll make the blender graphic sorry yeah we need to change the text color yeah. so this silver uh, may be more reflective um, I think we need uh, rough, slightly less reference, reference uh, roughness. Sorry. It's hard to like uh, work and talk, so I'm just getting used to it. Sorry about that. I keep forgetting I need to continue talking and uh, just give the instructions. So I'll make the main body green color slightly darker the graphics with the rgb curve node graphic looks fine i think uh, these shaders should work now in the next chapter we are going to add uh, some drops here uh, like all over the cans all right so I'll, i've adjusted the colors a little bit here like made the bottle slightly darker and uh, the herbs little more saturated I'll get rid of these references we don't need them anymore uh, once we used for modding purpose and uh, maybe align these two bottles for better view in the front I'm going to rotate them and uh, okay so much better Let's go to the visual development mode. Look, development mode, sorry. And bring in uh, maybe icosphere or much smoother, much smoother thing. Uh, maybe a sphere and uh, apply a shade smooth. 
nabit drops we'll use this and scatter it on these cans with the particles make a new particle and go to the shader let's go to the shader editor first very we'll simple shader for this drop here we'll use the transmission 100% it should work and uh, All right. Let's use uh, the HDR we have in the scene and uh, drop. Looks fine. Principal shader works pretty well even with a very simple setup. we are going to paint uh, our weight paint here on the cans we don't want the drops to appear too much on the text uh, so that the graphic is visible and uh, it's not on the can cap and stuff but just the body sides let's make a new vertex group and uh, paint fade on that bottle fill in the entire bottle and uh, just leave the sorry let's just uh, paint the entire thing and then we are going to erase the part subtract the part which we don't need you can always uh, just invert but uh, just going with the flow so I subtract this part And the top part here, we don't want uh, drops to appear on the edges. All right. Similarly, I'll just go to the object mode and uh, so maybe slightly more paint here. The weight. Okay. Similarly, we'll paint here and uh, not just copy the weight because uh, we want things to be random and uh, not very like, replicated. Not much to do here, just going to quickly uh, make bold strokes on the body and uh, erase this part. You can do it with a control and make new particle system with. Uh, no physics numbers maybe it should start at zero and uh, stay there thousand numbers let's keep it as it is and uh, physics we don't want any and uh, yeah, select the object uh, the drop object we have okay so the drops appear, uh, appear on the can, maybe increase the size and make it random, not too many, 150, around 150 works, maybe, okay, maybe reduce the size a little and uh, I definitely spent much more time than this. To set up the things properly in the first attempt let's see if there is anything else we can adjust okay let's select the weight paint we had create like a painted in the vertex groups and create a apply the particle system we already have the particle system maybe name it for a better organizing drops here yeah. i'll give it a different seed because uh, both cans look very similar and like uh, the drops appear very 
similarly on the both you can uh, use uh, the C parameter here let's have a look at uh, the render what is happening here drop looks much better in the cycles like uh, there is proper shadow and uh, specular happening looks uh, more photorealistic to have a better look at this I'm going to bring in another emission shader like before I will just uh, apply existing material and let's see how it looks when it receives the light from the back Okay, the cans look good. I think uh, maybe one more light here, and let's see if there's anything else we can improve. All right, I think it's working fine. We can uh, move on to the next part, which is uh, animation and simulation. So we are going to use a, a splash which will uh, interact with the, these both cans and uh, maybe some animation in the cans according to the storyboard. We we'll stick to the storyboard here. Alright, see you in the next one.